All right. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, April 9th, uh, 2015 Chattanooga City Council workshop. Uh, Ms. Hanson, could you please call the roll? Yes, Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Lehman. Here. Council Member Luce. Here. Council Member Whiting. Here. Council Member Moko. Here. Mayor Tapke. Here. Thank you. Um, let's, should we do the pledge tonight? Or it's a workshop. We don't usually do it in workshops. Um, we have an agenda tonight to work on uh, whittling down the number of candidates for the city administrator position um, down to five or six is the goal, and we'll see where we get to this evening. But uh, we have an agenda for this evening, and do we have any additions or corrections to the agenda from anyone here? Nope. We have a motion to approve it. Councilor Whiting? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Do we have a second? Yes. Second, Councilor Loose. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. All right, item number one, um, process overview. And I'm assuming this is all you, right, Sharon? <laughs> and you. Oh, all right. And all of you. <clears throat> Grab my agenda. Well, I, I come bearing a, a great deal of, of paper um, and I also want to say thank you. I know that when we originally started out, we were looking at next week as a, a date for uh, having a, a meeting, but I know that wasn't going to work for you. And so I really um, thought it would be wise to try to do this earlier rather than later. There are many different searches going on right now and wanting to keep us on time and make sure that, you know, you're able to, um, um, look at candidates and, and work on this uh, in a timely fashion. I appreciate your um, being flexible with your schedule. So thank you for, for starters. Um, this evening, the information that we are going to be discussing has to do with candidates and applicants for the city administrator position. This meeting is an open meeting, but the data that we're going to be discussing is private data. And so one of the things that occurs with that is we, we really need to speak in terms of numbers. And um, so at this point, you, you have some information on candidates. There are um, nine candidates. I also brought with me um, a book. Oh, must be this one. Um, that has <clears throat> all of the applications that we received, as well as a spreadsheet of applicants. And in, in recognizing that you might want to have some discussion of these, I have numbered um, those names so you can refer to applicants by number, and you can look in the application. Um, applications are tabbed in accordance with the numbers. So I'm going to bring that up front. So I'd suggest maybe um, if you want to tap each one of these down and I'm going to set this over here and there as anybody wants to see it or refer to it. Is that the Thank one you. we already have or is that the one we have received? These are the ones that were emailed last night. Um, just the ones they whittled the process from 27, 28? We had... Um, we had a total of 31. One person withdrew, and I need to look at this because I can't remember exactly how it works. I think two were two were late applicants. We we did have this as open until filled, but we we also there's a point at which we try to kind of curtail things because then it prevents us from working with the um, the folks that have gotten in their information in a timely manner. So we provided it all. We want to make sure you. You see what's what's here. Um, I did have a, a conversation um, yesterday with um, Council Member Luce, and he expressed an interest in seeing the applications. And I'm always okay with that. This is your process, and so I'm I'm merely trying to pull it together, and I'm trying to organize it for you. I'm very happy to explain things that I did or I didn't do. Um, I'm also, if, if you look at this and you have some second thoughts and you think there's somebody you want to look at again, it's your process. In that instance, we'll go back and make sure that that individual fills out um, a form that gives us um, you know, the, the information that you have in front of you, one of the candidate questionnaires, and we'll take them through the process. So I just want to make sure that 
um, you know, you you have that that understanding that while we have tried to do that narrowing down for you, um, if you look at it and you think that we've missed something or there's somebody that you would like to see, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. At what point do we ask questions about these here? <clears throat> you can do that. You can do that now. If you do it by number. It'll take me a moment, and you have the application, so I might be at a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, but most of these, I have some recollection of having reviewed them and the reason for the decision. Well, just some general questions. Um, Matt, could you go up to the microphone? Yeah, thanks. General questions would be, uh, a lot of these it says send questions and answers, no, 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 yes, no, no, no. Is that our side sending this information to them to have filled out, or was it? them not turning in it. Turning um, in. The send Q&A column is um, basically <coughs> looking at whether or not we felt that um, we should be asking them to complete a questionnaire. We saw some promise in the resume. Um, when you look down that line, you will see that on numbers 15 and 17, we, we thought, well, maybe these were people who did not have direct municipal experience, but they had public administration experience. And every once in a while, it's kind of interesting to take a look and see whether or not there's something there that, that might be interesting. Um, we basically looked at that and felt that in reviewing the questionnaires that they should not come forward. But in that um, binder that you have, you'll find that there are the questionnaires that those, those individuals completed. But everyone else did not receive it. And my second question would be, uh, what criteria disqualify these folks from moving up to the nine, I guess? You know, I would say that there are two primary things that we're looking at, and one is how they're fitting in with their years of their years of experience, and particularly looking at at um, some type of managerial experience. I think it would be difficult to come to this position without having had managerial experience. You know, primarily we are, we're interested in municipal experience. That was one of the things that that we all talked about, um, and. One of the things that, that I've done, too, in some of these instances, there might be people that um, I'm, I'm aware of some things in their background um, that I don't think become a fit, um, or I've seen newspaper articles that I, I'm, I'm just sort of convinced from what I'm seeing. Let's, let's not go any further. And so, again, those are things that we can definitely talk about um, by number. But I, I did go through. Um, each of these to look at them carefully and to think about what you all said you were wanting. Is there anyone on here that you in particular would like to talk about, Matt, or is I, it just a question as to how we got to this process? My question for how we got to this process, but I haven't had the chance to actually read the information about him I was working on all day. Mm -hmm. hey. I did read most all of them, and yeah, there's a reason they're not in the no. Mm -hmm. I did as well. Well, we, I'm, I'm glad at least that we could get it, the information out to you. Um, and I, I, I wish I, you know, I wish we'd had the conversation the day before and I would have tried to get it out sooner too to make it easier for people to, to read it. But I do want to make sure that once I know that there's a need that you have to, to get that information out to you. Um, I think the other thing that maybe is just important to touch upon one of the things I forwarded to you a few weeks ago was the results of the benchmark report that, that you did. I mean, basically, just to reiterate that process, we had all five members of the, the city council and two staff members that were agreeable to the council. We asked them to participate in, in, a, in a questionnaire as people who would know about the city administrator position what are the competencies that are important? Um, you know, what what is the the organizational culture that's important that you you want? And it was it actually gave us some very helpful information, and it was good news because while I know there have been the differences that you have been through as members of the city council, um, there was a remarkable consistency in many of the competencies that you wanted to see. 
um, in a in a city administrator. And I'm always looking for where's that where's that common base. Um, what do we want? And in many respects, um, this points out to where there are a great deal um, of things that you share in common as far as what you see as being important for a successful city administrator. So I did want to at least just mention that. I don't know if you have any questions about it. Um, if you do, I, I might try to answer a question or two. More than likely, we do have a psychologist that works with us. And if there were questions, I, I would probably defer to him on some of those things. But just to acknowledge that and let you know that it's something that is available for you in the process. That's sort of the process overview at at this point in time. And um, I would suggest that if we're perhaps ready, we can talk about the candidates that you have by, by number. Um, I will tell you that some of the next steps in the process are when we actually reach out to references and when we do background records checks and things of that nature. So you won't find that information at this point. And obviously, we. We don't want to get into doing that for the people that aren't going to go forward. We want to keep this process of narrowing down with the people that you're interested in. Um, you know, I suggested in the uh, communication that went out to you that you identify, you know, maybe four or five people that you would like to interview. Some of you um, may have had five people. Some of you might have had less than that. It really sort of differs among people as they look at the candidates and who they would like to to interview. So with, um, with that in mind, um, there are two ways that we can go forward. Um, the first is if you want to share what your thoughts were as far as the candidates that you had the most interest in, we can move forward. Or if you would like me to just say a couple sentences about why the person is in the pool, um, we can go through it in that manner. But I, whatever you feel is going to be most productive for you. What's the best way to let you know who we think are the ones, like our top? Three, five. I well, I would five. say, for starters, I think a lot of times I just go around the room and ask people to kind of read their list and, and see, you know, what it, what it looks like. <clears throat> if you're comfortable doing that, that would certainly be one way to begin. I am. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Hold on right. just a second here. We're going to do this speed round for you, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> when I was talking to her yesterday, I said half hour, Max. And she says, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, she around. gave and us I a said, long agenda. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that was more so I remembered what points to hit. But right. thank you. <laughs> Who would like to begin? I can begin. Four. Five. Seven. Eight. Nine. I had a uh, one, three, four. Whoops, slow. I'm, <laughs> this is not my expertise. Okay, one, three. Four, seven, and nine. I had four, five, uh, nine. So if I do this in numeric, four, five, seven, eight, Nine. You went first. <laughs> okay. I, Mike. I just tagged him, so it's going to take me a couple seconds. Here. Oh, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll leave that. I had uh, two, three, four, five, and nine. Two, three, four, four five, nine. Five, nine. Okay, my top candidate is number, come on here, number four. I actually have a tie for second place. Oh, wait a minute, did I screw that up? Just so everybody knows, I don't know if we gave them all. I didn't well, I didn't do it order. I didn't either. And at this, at this yeah. point, too, I'm just kind of interested in the numbers and see how many are there. You know, and what we can do is discuss and see you know, where, where the folks are in common. A lot of times there's a natural sorting that takes out at this point. So Sorry, I don't know if you did, Mike. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. I'm still trying to get this back together here. Uh, 
Go ahead and start talking. I'm going to get it together and I'll <laughs> give it to you. <laughs> I didn't do it. In the... All right. So in all of us have nine so far. Um, Nine's in mine. All of us have four so far. Four's in All nine. of us have four. Um, most of us have five. Five's in mine. So, All right. My, so Mike, what, let's get Mike's numbers. Yeah. <laughs> so we got four, five, nine. Yeah, not in that order, but. Yep. Um, right. Sorry, I wasn't. Didn't know we were going to do it that way. It's uh, okay. <laughs> this is a workshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three and two. Okay. So I'm showing one for number one, two for number two, two for number three, five. I had three for number yeah, three. Yeah, there's three for three. Three, four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I missed one. Okay. Oh, I see. I put it on the wrong line. Thank you. That's why we do this as a workshop. Get it, you know. Okay, so then there were five for four. Four for five. Mm -hmm. No one for six. Seven had three. Correct. I have three for eight. And I only have two for eight. You have two for eight? Okay. Uh, I have three. I have Matt, Mike, it's, and Jay. No, I didn't cut eight. Oh, that's number three. Never mind. Okay, so two for eight. And we have five for nine. Should we talk about one and six? So one had only one. Let me double check this. Um, and let's see, and six. So Jay, are you okay pulling one out? Yeah. Okay. I didn't vote for that one. Uh, you had number one. I did, yeah, I, I'll move on then, yeah. Okay. And then okay. Mike, you were the only one that had number two? I, I had no, two. there were two oh, for two. Oh, two for number two, sorry. Number let's six nobody two. had, and I just wanted to double check that one. Yeah. There's one for one, so probably pull one and six out, huh? Now, yep. what might be helpful, um, and you, 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 you tell me if this is helpful, this, mm -hmm. is, this is your call. I can tell you a little bit about why that person is in and if there's you know, anything that, that I noted. And if that helps you, it may help you accept or help you, you know, take someone out. I, I, I don't mind. Why was six in? Um, okay, six. Six was in because of the municipal experience um, at a larger scale. Uh, someone who's definitely had a, a commitment um, to municipal government. I like the fact that this person has had some experience working directly with council. I would hope that it would give the individual some sense of um, the, the interest in working with, with council members as well as having that administrative piece. Obviously, the negative piece here is that the person has been in one department and would not have the breadth of experience that somebody in a smaller organization might have. So you're comfortable with the six, six is, is, is out, mm -hmm. and we said that one was out. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about number two for us for a little bit? Yeah. Um, number two is, is one that interested me. I will tell you candidly, um, I wasn't, I wasn't real sure, but when I read the questionnaire, I was really impressed with the questionnaire. And in some conversation, one of the things that I thought was interesting is that um, there was a community that he worked for um, that had gone from a, I think a commission form of government to a city manager form of government. And, and that occurred around two, uh, 2007 or 2008. So there were a lot of things that happened in, in that city, a lot of transition that, that occurred within the organization. And in fact, the way they were structured, they didn't have um, an assistant city manager in their structure. This person was in the community development direct, was in the community 
development department. His supervisor essentially functioned as a, an assistant city manager, so he took on a number of special projects and things of, of, of that nature, working for his supervisor that was just you know one step then removed from um, the city manager. I think the other thing that was very interesting um, is that they had a, a, a natural disaster in this community of, of quite a large proportion. And times of natural disasters can be uh, situations where you have to learn a lot, you have to do a lot, and you're thrust into new situations. And definitely, that's occurred. This individual works as an assistant uh, or an acting city uh, administrator from time to time and is being given more responsibility in the organization right now, more departmental supervision. So uh, that's why, that's why I, I uh, brought this person forward. All right, so that's number two. Mm -hmm. How, uh, Mike and Matt, how strongly do you feel about number two? No, he was my fifth pick. Okay, yeah. Matt? Yeah, he's uh, probably my second. Okay. But it uh, doesn't look like the numbers are there, so. Well, well, we can, I mean, we can interview him. I mean, we can well, leave him in the mix for right now and let's talk about it a little more and see where we end up. If you feel strongly about it, let's leave it in for right now and I'm, then we'll come I'm, back I'm to it. I'm not that strong about that candidate, so I, okay. was, I picked five of what I thought were the, mm -hmm. uh, what I felt were the strong, my strongest five. And uh, I recognize that during the process, they're probably not all gonna make it, so. Yeah, and I think on this, um, it's to give you some, uh, additional information or perspective to talk about it. And again, where you, where you come out is where we're gonna be. I don't hold people to, do you have to have five, you can't have six. It's what, what feels right, and we'll kind of adapt the process to what the results are for you. Um, candidate, candidate three um, is someone who is working in a, in a smaller community right now. Um, has had some economic development experience as well as some um, city uh, experience. He's worked within counties. In fact, he started out in economic development in counties. Has somewhat of a private sector background before he actually went into working um, in local government. Um, this could be a stretch. I mean, there are some interesting things that are there because he brings that, that balance of public and, and private. Um, the, the difference in the organizations is, is fairly significant when you look at the number of staff um, and the budget uh, he works with currently and what you have here in Shakopee. So number three, um, number three, Jay, you had number three, and Mike and Matt, you had number three. I would feel more comfortable uh, interview number two and drop a number three, to be honest with you. Three was my fourth pick, so it's not a big deal. I, I had three kind of high, not the highest one, but uh, um, as far as two, I have some concerns there in a, with experience and, mm -hmm. and uh, other connections there. So I would prefer three over two. Okay. 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 So uh, let's uh, leave that one in until we get further along here. <laughs> And could you just give us, we all had number four, so I'm assuming yeah. number four is in, but could you give us a little background number four for uh, us? Number, number four's background is interesting because um, he, he has worked at um, two cities that are, are smaller, and now he's, he's, he's working at a much larger city, and one that's given him um, a, a fairly uh, unique opportunity at, at economic development. Um, what I thought was interesting in his, his cover letter, he starts talking about residential and commercial growth, community and economic development, redevelopment, transportation planning, financial administration, and it goes on and on. In his questionnaire, he talks about some things that he's done with technology and streamlining um, things. So, I mean, I think that he, he could uh, be someone who, who brings in some interesting perspective having that variety. Chair, are we okay using he, she? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. Nowadays, a he, she can be just about anything. No. <laughs> just a comment on uh, candidate four. Uh, yes. Um, 
just curious, maybe you know the answer. Uh, he's uh, he's in a position that he just got in. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Why is he looking now? Well, he he talked with me about that. Um, I think that there are two things that are occurring for him. First, on the professional level, and I think that this is is probably um, a primary driver for him. Um, he he really wants to be able to manage a community. He's he's managed some smaller communities. Ha had a great opportunity um, to be part of a of a larger community, and it's not cutting it for him. He, the scope of the responsibilities, um, he says, are not as as um, as as much as he would like. You know, he's finding it interesting. He's got things that he he certainly likes about the position. But he really is telling me that he would prefer to manage a city, and he likes, he likes the size and the composition of Shakopee. Um, the other thing, a lot of times um, people are motivated not just by the professional, but also um, things that work with their family. And I, I know that um, he, he has a, a spouse that is being relocated um, to more of a metro area. And so, you know, he's looking at this saying, maybe maybe it all comes together. So, but he, when he talked with me, a, a lot of this really had to do with wanting to get back and, and really have more managerial responsibility. I have a question on his second place of employment mm -hmm. on the list here, 2008 to 2014. How big is that city? Do you know a population by any chance? Hmm. I think I, I would that. say under ten. I don't. No, it's probably right around there or higher. For some reason, I thought that I saw eighteen somewhere. Oh. Maybe that was somewhere else. I saw um, that on some of You know, I don't have the populations on on all of Google these. Up. Yep. Google. It'll take two seconds. You know, to me, the interesting piece. On that that second community listed on his resume, is he came in and kind of did um, a, a change management piece, particularly mm. in the customer service area. In his questionnaire, he talks about. I think I think he made some statements. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Population is under five. Under five. Well, so. under ten. Yeah, <laughs> that's a large budget. Okay. Um, yeah. But there, were, there was something that he talked about in here that people were always kind of uh, concerned about what the, the city was going to do. I think it was under the customer service question. Yeah. Yeah, so on um, page four of the, the questionnaire, he starts to write about improving the city's relationship with citizens. So. They were looked upon as obstructionist and uncompromising. And some of the things that he did with department heads and frontline staff to, you know, really turn things around, change some things. And so that, to me, that's one of the things that is, is, kind, of, is kind of interesting. The size is smaller, but that's a pretty tremendous um, way of getting people to start to look at things differently and perhaps behave differently. That is uh, answer number 10, mm -hmm. candidate number four. Yeah, that is uh, something you guys should look yeah. at. Yeah. All right, so uh, candidate number five. Number five. Um, you know, I've talked with candidate number five on, on many occasions. I've, I've not had um, the opportunity to meet him. Um, he is committed to relocating to the Midwest. Um, I know that he has been in an active job search, um, although he is being selective in the places that he applies and places where he thinks he could, he could be um, a benefit to the organization. Um, there um, is like his, the first county um, that he he worked in is kind of interesting because he he came in as a new administrator and one of the things that is is interesting it's a small world I've actually been doing some work with this county and it's clear to me that some of the things that he 
put into place as a first administrator are things that they're, they're <coughs> continuing to use, so there's some lasting impact he's had. Um, as he talks about his, his situation, he, he's had um, some instability. First of all, in, in this first county, um, they put in an administrator form of government. Not everybody was behind that. The people on the board changed, and then they didn't want the administrator anymore. So he left. He went to another county, and that ended up being a place where there were um, a lot of reductions in staff, and it was budget motivated. And so his position was one of the positions that was eliminated. And then in the city, um, I actually asked him about this earlier today, just to just to get some sense of it. I mean, what what I'm understanding um, in this in this community is that. There were some issues um, with harassment of, of staff members, and he, he pointed that out and um, basically was, was let go for that reason, that it was a sort of a political termination. Um, you know, I, I think that the, I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more stability here. By the same token, he's, he seems to be someone who has worked in the organizations that he has been in to, to, to try to, to do things. I, I get a sense that he's probably a very strong-willed individual um, and that he's going he's gonna to do things and he's, he's also going to be um, you know, fairly ethical in, in the way he approaches things. I had this one, this candidate on my list. Um, it was not high on my list. I was concerned about a jump from community that he has been in to a community like ours. Mm -hmm. How concerned, if at all, are you about that dramatic change in venue? Good question, because um, I'm not sure I can really know the answer. I can, I can look <clears throat> at the counties where he's been, and I can say, Midwestern values, you know, I'm pretty familiar with both of the organizations that he had been at, so I, I, I don't think that becomes a, um, a difficult jump for, um, for him to make in, in that way. Um, I do think the, the city where he was last um, employed, I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if there wasn't some thinking about the fact that he has military background and there's a very predominant military influence in that community that that might be some good liaison work and that that might be why he, he finds him, himself um, so far south. But okay. I'm not sure. You know, some of these people I know I've met. Um, I've talked with him a number of times, but I've never actually met him. So okay. I don't know. All right. Mike had a question first, sorry. Um, <clears throat> this person is number one on my list. If for no other reason, I want to meet this guy. Okay. I mean, with his yeah. background. <laughs> um, it's fascinating, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you say he's, it's kind of an unstable work uh, history, but you look where he was working. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The, his choices were, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you don't stay in that place for very long. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the concerns I had was, uh, that it didn't seem like he was pretty strong-willed in some of the conversations he's having in, in some of these uh, things here. Also, um, he did not. He so, did, or he did not seem strong-willed. He, he did. did seem strong. -willed. Yes. 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 And he he has some things on his resume that point to a little more political. Um, mm -hmm. Thought we wanted to go after. So I had some concerns there. Yeah. Okay. You can't argue with his references, though. No. Mm -hmm. right. All right, so I'm assuming five is in? Yes. Um, and then six we took out. Jay, you didn't have five. You're okay with that? I didn't have five. But I mean, you're okay with? Yeah, interview, sure. Yeah. Okay. So seven? Seven had three. Um, a seven is somebody that I've, um, actually, I've actually worked with and I know pretty well. Um, I think that um, she's got some interesting experience. Um, um, just, and, and this you, you, you might be um, aware of, but this was submitted um, before she left her current position, and that was um, with a negotiated agreement. So she, 
she left. The council wanted to go um, a different direction, and um, I think she she came she came in and and there was a sense of um, you know many opportunities that that she could bring with her in working with the community. Um, she had previously been in a large midwestern county um, and had had quite a large um, budgetary responsibility. Um, so so quite quite strong in in that way uh, as far as administration and supervision and, and, and all of that. So um, I know she is, is looking at uh, a variety of, of other positions, wants to remain in Minnesota. Um, and I can certainly answer any sure. uh, this questions one was I have. On the top of my list, I did have some questions. Oh, what I really liked about this candidate was that she's bilingual, yeah, Spanish. She is. Uh, she mentioned something about building coalitions, and I thought that was good. My question is: Is, uh, is she going to stay where she currently lives, or would she move? She would relocate. She would relocate. Okay. She would relocate. And she is bilingual. Um, uh, I, I did work with the city of uh, with the city um, back so many years um, ago when, when when she was hired. And one of the things that was interesting is she actually had a a, a meeting that um, was conducted in Spanish. So she she's very you know very adept at that. And I think um, someone who's built, very good at building coalitions. So I mean, she's I'd she's able to yeah. she's able to you know work with people, look at collaboration. So some real strong skill sets there. Okay. Um, did you guys have any questions or concerns about her that she wasn't on your lists or what? She were was thinking? fourth on mine. And... Uh, she was fourth on yours. Yes. She wasn't on yours. I didn't have. Oh, wait a minute. No, my bad. I didn't have number seven down no. for you, but okay. you can. You Did can. you have any concerns, or just it wasn't there for you Somewhat yet? Somewhat of what Jace uh, said about the last guy. I think hers is just the opposite side. Okay, Matt. Yeah, I think she's too uh, too much focus in one area and not broad enough. Could you explain what that means to me? Um, I'm not sure if I can or not. Let's see here. How do I say that? Because I would have said just the opposite. She's got, she's got a lot of different, that I thought was interesting. Very interesting, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it was, I, no, she wasn't one of my top five, so. Okay. And I, I if we're, if we're trying to whittle down, I mean, and this is just me, but I, I'm looking at it and <clears throat> if six and one are out and we go based just on numbers alone. Let's just get through the, okay. the. Ones first. I, I know exactly where you're going, but yep. let's get through eight and nine. Yep. The rest of seven, then eight and nine, then we'll go there. Okay. Um, did anybody have any further questions on seven? I did not. Okay. We'll talk about that in just a little bit as well. So eight, please. Eight. There are two. Um, eight is someone who has uh, is, is in here because of some of the um, municipal experience that he's had. Um, I guess I like the fact that He's worked in a public works department, assisting a director. I like it when somebody's got that departmental experience. Um, he was in another community that actually is, is, um, is fairly a, a large community, and he did work in the budgeting area. And there was a lot of analysis here. He talks about creating business plans um, for, for departments. And I, I just think he's probably got a good, a good sense of operation. And um, since 2010, um, he has been um, managing um, a city, uh, you know, 50 employees, $9 million operating budget. So it looks to me like there are some, um, you know, some, 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 good, some good background there, right. good municipal experience. I had number eight on my list, but I wasn't super... It wasn't really high on my list. It wasn't mine either. So I'm okay pulling yeah, eight out. Me yeah. too. Okay, so eight's out. Um, and nine. Nine. Um, nine, uh, I, I'm just, I'm very impressed by um, candidate number number nine and, and just some of the work that, that she has done. And um, I'm not sure what more I can add to that. I think she's somebody who shows that she can, uh, she can step up. 
Okay. I vote so. Yeah. So nine is in. Um, so we're at currently at three. Uh, numbers four, five, and nine are where we're at. Well, um, would you review the numbers that you you have in at this point yep. here? Four, five, and nine are in. Four, five, nine. Three and seven are and actually two, two three, three and, seven. and seven are arguable. So two, just to kind of recap, uh, Matt was very strong on number two. Mm -hmm. uh, you still maintain that, Matt? Well, by the by the numbers, you drop two and keep uh, both three and seven in because three and seven both have three. And then go with six and then it'll be six. Right, and I, I agree with that um, up to the point of that if you feel really strongly about somebody, mm -hmm. Then well, we can continue to talk about that. But if you don't feel that strongly about it, then let's toss it out. I don't think it's about an individual feeling strong. I, I think this is five of us need to, need to be doing this. So we can do an right. extra interview. Yeah. So as I'm looking at it just pure, pure numbers if it's, uh, All right. you know. So we're going three, four, five, seven, nine. How badly do you want to keep three in? I wanted seven. I can float on three. Well, you you gotta. They both have the same number of, of supporting but, votes. So. I but I was. Three. Jay was the only one that had strong feelings toward three. So I mean, if we get down to four, it's not a tragedy. Uh, but I I had three and not seven, and, and I gave okay. them two. So. Yeah, oh just, yeah, but I thought that you weren't very strong on three. Well, so if we I could. Like three. Okay, so three, four, five, seven, nine. Three, four, five. Seven and nine. How so easy was that? Forty minutes so far. <laughs> All right. So is that? Do you have any other comments we should talk about with that, Sharon? Or? Um, uh, no. I think that um, I think that we have a a good. I'm just taking a final look here. Did you want six candidates? You know. It's what you want, and let me let me just give you a few a few reactions here. It's not uncommon in this process to have a candidate fall by the wayside. It happens, so that's that's one of the things to to realize. Um, I think the other thing that I would highly recommend is that we we look at an interview structure that is two interviews. So we would come in and we would we would kind of get that initial view of people, talk with people, and, and probably cut that in about half and then, and then have some finalists come back that you spend some more time on. I think seeing people twice um, is an important thing to do, and it gives, it gives you some time you know, to uh, you know, think about the questions that you have. It, it gives us the opportunity to develop some scenarios if you want to see how people would respond to a scenario. Just you know, a lot of different ways that we can cut that. Yeah, Jay. When, uh, it, now that they've become candidates, these five, they'll have this will be public knowledge. It, it will be answer. it will be public information, and I I know I need to have a little conversation after we're done. So, <laughs> but yeah, it it becomes it becomes public information. So this person runs the risk of if they have a job. They're gonna that's gonna be. Well, I think that's, first of all, um, I have talked with people to let them know, you know, what the um, status is and that they're being presented and how quickly things might go. Um, this is my pitch to the media. I always like time. <laughs> I always like time to give them a call and, you know, let them know. And I like to, I like to work. I mean, I, I recognize that. Um, it's been very important to the to the city that you you have a process that is out there that people know what's going on and I certainly certainly honor that so however however we can work it out I mean I'm 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 fine with with getting um, the information there and you know making sure that the candidates are well, cognizant of this on that note the public disclosure was one of my only concerns with the candidate too getting that out there and maybe not making the final cut. So do you guys have any other issues that you want to push two on it with regard to that? Two Candidate two, we took him off, but if you want right. to add a sixth one, that was my concern, is that yeah. after him becoming public. Well, what, um, were you pretty strong on two? Or? No, I wasn't. Okay. Um, 
but so maybe I missed something there as I was reading a little bit. So two candidate two will become public next if even no, if it's not like right. Five, if we yeah. interview them, then okay. It would be. If you right. have five, so yeah, yeah. So if that was the argument, that's what I was making. And sure. number okay. two, I mean, you you could say that number two is an alternate uh, in the event that 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 someone um, is is not participating as we get into this. I've had that happen in the past. We can certainly accommodate that. If you say, "Hey, I, 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 I want to do it," we we can we can take six. It's really it's it's where your comfort level is. It's where I your gut is. I think we're good with our five, and as it comes up, if it's necessary, then we can reevaluate. Mm -hmm. Matt, a couple of comments, Mayor. First of all, I, I don't want to now that we've narrowed it down to five, go back and start enlarging it because it sounds like we're going backwards at that point. Uh, but I understand the alternate mm -hmm. position, a little bit different than what I'm used to on a racetrack where you're the alternate in case somebody can't start the race. Uh, <laughs> but with that being said, I guess the questions that I have is, um, once these five are finalists, you know, we can, we can talk about the name of the individual. I, it's probably more appropriate for yourself to give out any information further than that. Is that right? Or, or are we allowed to, or how should that work? Okay. I, I kind of have a philosophy with this, so probably that's the, the best thing to share with you. I, I think that it is important, you know, for people to know the identity of people, but I always like there to be enough space for that person to, to come and interview. You know, only one person is going to get the job, and I would feel terrible if, if there was just, you know, so much out there um, about individuals or candidates. Um, that that would create some issues like that. You know, when you talk with people, they don't really know much about you and you don't know too much about them. So I think it's just for people to understand who's going to be in the mix and to know what those next steps are. And that kind of takes us into the next part of, of the agenda. And so if you don't mind if I kind of fall into that piece, I think that there are some, some ways that you might want to conduct this interview um, and and who's involved or if if you're if you're going to do meet and greets or community panels or any number of, of, of different things there but I think that part of what the the community um, will will want to know is what are the candidates kind of what's that process going forward and I think to be able to outline that and really I don't see a lot more conversation to be honest because um, it's a it's a process of getting to know people um, and the evaluation, we'll continue to do some work on evaluating them. We'll continue to bring you written reference reports. We'll do that background records check so that we just keep going deeper in what we know about the individuals. Mayor, if I could continue on this question line. The, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure this in my mind. If we're going to interview these individuals face to face probably twice, correct? Yes, that's what okay. I'm recommending. In between there, will they have the opportunity to maybe have a not necessarily by us, but a tour of the city sure. facilities and operation. I like something like that. I do too. Um, you never know uh, what which candidate might say. I'm going to withdraw at this point, <laughs> you know. Uh, and if that's their feeling, then they should. Um, maybe it's too big or whatever. They're not used to it, not comfortable with it. Um, so I think that's a good idea. I, and I actually, I, I look at it a little differently. I mean, I think that um, it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. um, the candidates have been engaged in selling themselves to you, and there are some who will get the opportunity to continue that. But you want to be to a point where they are interested in coming to Shakopee. And so I think that you you know, to do the tours, to show the, the accomplishments that you've had, to show the growth. One of the reasons that a lot of the people who applied for this position have some background is in economic development is they like the growth, they like the activity. Those are things that they find to be professionally stimulating. Um, so you, you want to let them know what's here. Um, you want them to see the projects that you might be looking at them to work on. Um, the, the things that are going well and the things that aren't going so well, just to kind of, you know, let them try that on. Um, and I think that that openness is one of the things that helps you sell the community um, to the candidates. So it, it gives them information, but it also 
It also helps with them, them wanting to, to come. So we are obviously trying to get to a person's position that we all five are 100% on board with. And that is the goal of getting somebody that we can, that we all um, want to support and work with on a, a, a very uh, consistent basis. And so what are, in your opinion, what is the next step to this, the first of the two interviews? What's the best forum for handing that? Is that all of us? Is that a few people that we need to decide? Or what, what's yeah. the first interview? Well, what I, would, what I would first of all say is that we want to do this so that you are all present. I mean, I, I know that there are some folks that like to do one-on-ones and things like that, but it's a collective hiring decision, and you've got to be able to share and talk about the, the comments and how you, how, you, how you feel. That's part of that process of, of making that decision. So I think that's a real, a real strong piece that we, we want to be able to do that. Um, certainly when we, when we do um, tours, um, it's going to be more intensive for staff doing tours because we probably are going to turn to a staff member to give a tour. A lot of times, so it used to be that sometimes you would do it with the candidates as a group. More often, we're not. It, it's something that's done on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and and that becomes really good too because, basically, when someone's giving a tour, they they get to interact with that individual in a different way, and it it just becomes another piece of information. We can ask for some feedback on on just the nature of the tour, the kinds of you know questions that people ask, and 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 get that out for you. And, you can consider that as a piece of information. I think it's important for department heads to meet with people because, again, they're going to work with those people. Does it feel like it's going to be a good working relationship? And community, some, sometimes it's important to um, cities to, to have some community presence. Sometimes it's a community panel or a meet and greet. And I will tell you, there are other times that councils will say, you know, we were kind of elected to make this decision and, and you know, we can weigh all of that, but in the end, you are the ones who will have more information than anybody else on this, on this, um, on this process because you're going to see a lot of information that wouldn't, wouldn't ever be public that you can consider in your evaluation. And Sharon, I'm assuming that that is, what you're talking about is after the first round of interviews, correct? That we have a first round of interviews and pull that down to two and or then three. And then do, and then and then bring in more. You can certainly do it that way, yes. And then do the road show and. And I think the one thing that's kind of nice about it, um, doing it in that manner is it isn't as intensive. Um, you know, so that's 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 definitely something that is is a consideration if you're doing it with six people. I think um, you know one of the other things too we will want to talk about. We have one person from out of two people from out of state. I think just one. just one. Um, you know whether or not. Um, you are willing to, to, to do something with, with travel to assist that person, or if the first time, you know, um, the, we want the person to come up, or you want to, you know, give that person some, some amount of money to assist with, with getting them here. But that's a consideration when you have somebody who's traveling. That was my main concern with five. I'd, um, be, I'd be willing to pay for the travel. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. you know, we could look at that. What? Based on there's five. four of us that are for five, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can do that. Perfect. Is there a day that works? I mean, can we can kind of look at dates? We had down um, April 30th through May 12th as dates for doing interviews. Well, the 30th is the Flower Basket Fundraiser. So that's an event in town. Okay. <laughs> We're busy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it will be published. Yes. Yeah. Can't do it on the 5th. So. Um, do you want to do this now, or should we coordinate those with Chris? Um, whatever you would like to do. If you have calendars and you, 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 know, you want to shoot for a date, if you yeah. want some coordination. Let's have Chris mm -hmm. shoot some dates out, and we'll work it from there. Yes, sir. I'm just wondering if we shouldn't ask the candidates how they would like the first round to go a little bit. If they want to see more of the city, maybe we can accommodate that. Um, if they just want to keep it very basic. I think we whittle it down to finalists and then a little more. Yeah. But if somebody, asks, if somebody wants to take a tour of the city, I'm sure. Ahead yeah. of time that 
you know, how much, how far do they want to get into it and accommodate them somewhat. Well, you know, you've got a lot of information on your website. So, I mean, one of the things that used to be you'd send big packets of information, but you have so much information on your website, I think people will get a good feel. Um, we can definitely, um, you know, see if they have any, any questions that they have or if there's anything that they're going to need on their end. Um, I, I think that for most candidates, I, I would always take a tour and then there could be an organized tour. I mean, I would probably want to spend a little bit of time in the community. The only person who won't be able to do that is the person who is, um, you know, uh, in the South, but. Okay. So we'll shoot for the last week of April, first week of May for the mm -hmm. first interview. And then second interview, does that make that the second or third week of May? Is that? Um, I'm thinking, let's see. Got the week of April 27th and we were saying, so you could probably look at either the 20, the 29th of April, I don't know if, if being the day before your event creates an issue. Um, you could look at, at May 1 as possible dates. And I think, yeah, maybe what we'd want to do then is, is uh, I don't have a calendar in, in front of me, but it might be that it's something like the, 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 the 10th or the 11th of, of May. I don't know if you have, have conflicts with that, but then to, to do something with the finalist. Okay. All of those will we'll work those out. Okay. Um, perfect. And I, I really like the idea of, for the second interview, community involvement, having, I don't know if it's an open house type thing. Um, what I know other communities have had a meet the candidates kind of thing where people can mm -hmm. get up and say something and then everybody can talk to them afterward. Does everybody think that's a good idea, bad idea? We could have a location where uh, the finalists can all meet with whoever from this community wants to go and talk to them. Mm -hmm. and we can just let that happen for two hours or so and after that's done then we can do our interviews because that gives us the opportunity to watch how they interact. Right. I would, I would suggest oh, yeah. that um, I come back with some more information and some options since you're looking at that to occur, um, you know, in that second, that second right. interview date. Because there are some different ways that you can look at it, and I can talk with some of my colleagues. There are different ways to do it, and people um, may be able to give us some ideas of, of what's worked really well, if there have been some things that haven't worked, and let's let's just get a little bit more information and allow me to prepare some options. And 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 certainly, if you come up with an option, I don't have um, don't have down something that's a hybrid of some of those things. I'm 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 certainly willing to do that. But I could give you a little bit more background, and that might be helpful in making the decision. And I'd also like, and I don't know what a similar thing with staff as well, so staff can talk to. The candidates. Well, we could make a day of it. The, the candidate's going to be here. Staff can meet them in the exactly. during the day, and public can right. meet them in the evening. So instead of having a, a tour where they go to various departments, maybe we want to have like a time when all the department heads can meet them mm -hmm. and explain their department size, scope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll work those out. Uh, Jim, you got to come up here. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> You can make sure to tell Lori who you are. Uh, um, Mayor, members of council. Um, you still have to say your name and address. Oh, so. Chairman Casper, 1931 Francis Court, Shack B. Um, just uh, working at the U, some of my experience there during a lot of the VP searches, what they would do is, you know, they'd have set days that each candidate would come in. A lot of times they might have, okay, here's a set time for candidates to meet with staff, uh, depending on the position. So if it was like the VP of research, it might be, okay, we're going to have a session that just research at your, researchers at the university could come together and maybe have that candidate present their vision of how they want research to be done and then maybe a general meet and greet. So they usually did that, you know, with the stakeholders throughout. So, you know, in this case here, maybe it's, you know, ask them to meet with the chamber and provide a presentation on economic development and what their vision is on it and then meet with staff, talk about their vision of, you know, organizational effectiveness or however they'd want to work it out. 
and that's and then get feedback that way and then maybe just general meet and greet so that seemed to work well of getting different stakeholder input and kind of put them to the test of you know sometimes people are great at presentations sometimes people are great at one-on-one -on -one, making sure you're giving that them that wide range of opportunities to really present themselves so thank you Matt? one cautionary note on on that style is that the, this these individuals these candidates are going to be uh, should be really focused on the various departments of a, a pretty large pretty expansive city um, and if we're going to start expanding that to various service groups the list is going to be very large and I don't know how you can justify having one not the other which ones do you exclude and pretty soon you've got division happening within your community because of that That's so I, kind of U.S. Council to kind of make that decision on yeah where, where are your focus where would right. you really like to see them shine I kind of really think it's going to be a challenge to have a candidate meet all the different departments and really get their heads around the size the scope of the functions of every department um, let alone all the civic groups you know really when you when you think about it what you're you're trying to do is just get the sense of fit and and where it is um, people can learn different things about the the organizations but it is the style it is the approach it's how they work how they interact with people that become very important and so you know I think it is to kind of go back to the the profile and look at some of the things that we said were important and ways that we can get information about the people and and just you know give them a sense of comfort with who you are as you're getting comfortable and and thinking about whether they might be appropriate to be your next city administrator all right oh yes ma'am Christetta Barini, Shakopee Valley News. Um, just a quick question. Um, I know you're still in the process of working out exactly how the interview process would be, but um, in my experience at other municipalities in the state, um, when they've done a department head or administrator hire, um, the finalists were interviewed in a public setting. Um, it was closed to any sort of commentary from the from the public, but it was. Uh, taped and it was in front of uh, a, a, in a public se setting like this and I was wondering if that is on your mind as a possibility so I'll take my question seated I like that idea. yeah I was assuming that the final interviews would be a public interview it, it is a public meeting mm -hmm. yeah it is a public meeting and so um, yes the public the public can can be present no question and mayor and if I correct me if you're if I'm wrong but I think what she's asking is in our second interview process where the general public is invited in to meet and greet and talk to these finalists um, that after they're done with that that there's nothing that stops the media folks from stopping that individual as they walk out and, and do an interview with them um, is that what you're asking um, I was I was actually asking about the Being public. interview process like yeah. when when the council would be asking the final questions of the candidate yep yeah. that that too will be public too then at that yeah point. no that's 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 definitely that's definitely right but but at at that process there's nothing that would stop the media from walking up to them and say excuse me I'm so and so I'd like to ask you some questions okay. and uh, what they say and what you record which <laughs> got to knock you but isn't always the same but, uh, <laughs> uh, is up to you guys to figure out and write all right. Do we have anything else we need to discuss? Or um, we... I think. Let me look at my list and make sure that uh, we've covered anything. Um, but maybe just a, a comment about um, interview questions. Um, many times I will get out some some interview questions for you to take a look at, knowing that sometimes it's easier to look at something and react to it than start with a, a, a blank sheet of paper. So. Um, if you're okay with that, I can send you a draft and then work with whatever comments um, and suggestions you get and, and, and incorporate those and send something back out to you. And when we do interviews, I, I, am, um, I do think it's helpful to do follow-up questions with people. You know, we'll have, we'll have questions that are, are fairly standard that you would ask, but it's, it's to kind of 
focus the discussion and it does not prevent someone from following up, asking someone to elaborate, give an example, and that kind of, that kind of thing. Is she telling me I have to pre-screen screen my questions to her? Is that what you're telling me? No. Okay. I did not. What I told you is that we will want to have, we will want to have some set interview questions. I mean, that's something you just need to do for Didn't, didn't your firm do practice. that for us already? Huh? Didn't your firm do that for us already? No. Okay. I will. All right. <laughs> <laughs> haven't done it, haven't done it yet, but yes, I will. Well, you, and, well the reason I ask is because you narrowed down uh, 31 to 9, mm -hmm. and I assume you did that through some process of asking some questions. You have them, yeah. Okay. You have some of the questions because so, a lot of that is the 14 questions we ask them to respond to. Yep, so some of that has already been done. Yeah, but we want to we wanna come up with some other questions and get them to tell you about um, times that they've done things just to, to kind of get you to know them. And what I, what I the reason I'm, I'm talking with you about this right now is I think it is important to um, understand that process of having some questions, but to understand that as council members, it's good to have follow-up questions. And so, no, I'm not, I'm not prescribing the, the questions. We'll prescribe okay. some set of questions, but not the totality. Can I suggest that you send out a list of the questions that we're not allowed to ask or shouldn't be asked? I have that, yes. That, you know, their marital yes. status, number of kids, age, these types of things. Um, That's right. No, and you know, the other thing is that if you begin to ask a question that is maybe going in that direction and there's another way that we can ask, ask a question, um, I think that, that I can help you with that. And, and frankly, the candidates generally want you to get to know them as a person, and so many of them will share that information without you asking because they, wanna, they want you to know who they are. Well, and, and because if we ask the question yeah. wrong, and they're not considered, that could be used against the city. Yeah. So I just know that because I've done a lot of interviewing in my life. Mm -hmm. for no, but stuff. you'll have the questions, you'll have some questions that you can react to about if these are the questions you'd like to ask. And of course, um, after you go through a first round of, of, of interview questions, we can talk a little bit about what you're hoping to accomplish in a second interview and, and just how we might you know, change that a little bit so you see something different from the individuals. Good. All right, any further questions? I just have one comment. Please do. We definitely have to take every one of these people to City Hall when the train goes by so they know what they're up against. <laughs> <laughs> they can come to my office. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, anything else? All right, we will uh, adjourn to, does anybody know the date, Laura? Do you know the date we adjourn to? Um, it's April 21st. All right, we will adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn to okay. April 21st at 7 p.m. Yeah. All right, we have a uh, motion by Councilor Mokul, second by Councilor Luce to adjourn to the 21st at 7 p.m. Any discussion? At City Hall, correct? Mm -hmm. At City Hall, yeah. All right. Any discussion? Nope. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Passes unanimously. We are adjourned. Thank you, and thank you to the county for letting us use uh, their uh, boardroom tonight. <laughs>